George Childs here in the 452nd Judicial District Court of McCullough County, Texas. We're here today for final hearing in this case. Um, we have uh, petitioner Mr. George present, represented by his attorney, Mr. Chapman. Ms. Solomon is present. Uh, we know that Mr. Taylor um, was her attorney in the CPS case. When we severed this case, his name came along with the case, but my understanding is that she's been unable to contact Mr. Taylor and has not had contact with him for a significant time. I think the understanding with this was that this case would be resolved. And so, uh, Mr. Chapman, I know you've been working, visiting with Ms. Solomon, Solomon and Mr. George. Uh, do you have an announcement as to final Yes, order? Your Honor. I think we have an agreement. I'm happy to recite the terms of that agreement into the record and see if the parties agree that's correct. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. Uh, the the terms of the agreement are that uh, Billy George will be appointed sole managing conservator. Jasmine Solomon will be appointed uh, possessory conservator. As uh, the sole managing conservator, Billy will have the exclusive right to determine the residency of the child, uh, the exclusive right to make the educational decisions, and the exclusive right to make medical decisions, except in case of uh, emergency or uh, medical decisions during Jasmine's periods of possession. Uh, the parties have agreed that they will uh, move to a standard possession order type visitation schedule being first, third, and fifth uh, Fridays from 6 o'clock p.m. until Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Also Thursdays from 6 to 8 at Billy's house should Jasmine decide to exercise that. Uh, Jasmine will be picking up and dropping off uh, Levi from those uh, visitations. The parties have also agreed that Lewis can be present during those periods of possession. However, Billy will uh, be present for the first few visits to for a few hours to uh, make sure things go nice and smoothly. That possession schedule will continue year round uh, without any uh, extended summer possession and without a specific holiday possession schedule. The parties will agree on times for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and related holidays, uh, similar to what they did when the roles were reversed. Uh, the parties uh, also agree that Jasmine will pay minimum wage child support, which I calculate to be $200 a month, and uh, uh, Billy will continue to provide the health insurance for the child, which totals currently about $430 a month. All right. And do we have uh, any Medicaid issues or AG issues to address? No Medicaid or AG issues. Uh, insurance is provided through uh, Billy's employment uh, in the wool field, uh, and uh, the child is on that policy. Okay, so there's no um, arrearage or anything like that we need to address? None to my knowledge. Okay. All right. I, so think, I think Billy has had uh, health insurance coverage all along for the child. Okay. Great. That's unusual nowadays. Mr. George, Ms. Solomon, will you unmute your devices and let me swear you in? I do. Okay. Mr. George, you heard what Mr. Chapman said. Is that your understanding and agreement? Yes, sir. And Ms. Solomon, is that yours as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll approve your agreement and enter the orders as announced. <laughs> Mr. Chapman will get me an order, a decree or an order here. In the next few days, we'll get that signed and sent back to uh, the clerk and she'll get an, uh, one emailed out to you to your email addresses that you have on file there. Um, Jasmine, if you need to update your email address to her, you can do that through chat directly to the district clerk, but or you can call down there and tell her. But if you don't get an order in a couple of weeks, you can go down there and get a copy from her. Okay, anything else for the record, Mr. Chapman? Not on this case. Okay, Miss Miss Solomon, anything else? You understand everything? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. I'm uh, we've got a, you've had a good week in court this week, Ms. Solomon, so keep up the good work. Uh, we'll recess from the record, and uh, Mr. George, Ms. Solomon, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And here's that document from Sue and Becca. I was actually thinking about your grandma earlier today, uh, Regina. <laughs> I was, when I was coming in, they, they were still doing some work with them and sawing some trees down in the courthouse yard. Uh -huh. So, um, I was thinking it's not going to be long. Supposedly, we're going to have our move-in event on July 13th, and we'll hopefully be moving over there in June. And I was thinking about how happy she would be uh, if she was. You see her, see her go like this? Oh. Yes, and 
I'll tell everyone, um, of course, we're broadcasting on the World Wide Web, but um, Miss Regina's grandmother was the district clerk in Mason for over right around 30 years. Uh -huh. I when I came into office, she had been the clerk for 28 years. And I remember vividly thinking, how could anybody work in this building for 28 years? And now I've actually been there almost 30 years myself. So right. that is on. But, you know, the night of the fire, I don't think I've had the chance to tell you this, but the night of the fire, um, um, there were no, there was zero chance of rain in Mason that night. And it was very windy. And everybody was really concerned, of course, that the fire was going to blow across the street and burn something else down. But uh, the night of the fire, for just a minute, there was a little shower of rain. And I know 100% for certain that that was Miss B convincing God to rain a little bit and help put out that fire. Just give a little help. <laughs> uh, I, I promise you, I know for sure that, that was her work that was getting that done. So. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, with that said, let's call cause number two in the matter of the marriage of Regina Stockbridge Perkins and David Anthony Perkins. And in the interest of the child here in the 452nd Judicial District Court of Mason County, Texas, we're here today for our final hearing in this case. Mr. Chapman is here representing Petitioner Ms. Perkins, who is present, and uh, they're here to enter this agreed final decree of divorce. Ma'am, raise your right hand, please, to be sworn. And uh, you filed this petition for divorce here uh, in the Mason County District Court, correct? Yes, sir. Prior to filing that, have you been a resident of the state of Texas for at least six months and in, of Mason County for at least 90 days? Yes, sir. And you are currently married to uh, David Anthony Perkins. Is that correct? Correct. Do you have one child between you? Yes. And he is how old at this point? He's seven. Okay. Uh, are you currently pregnant or expecting a child? No, sir. Any other children of the marriage other than Mason? No. Okay. Uh, has the marriage between you and David become insupportable because of discord or conflict of personalities that destroys the legitimate ends of the marriage relationship? Yes, sir. In other words, is the marriage over? Yes, sir. Any reasonable expectation of reconciliation? No, sir. All right. Uh, have you and David, through your attorney and his attorney, reached a, a an agreed final decree of divorce that disposes of all issues concerning the possession and conservatorship of your child and the division of your marital estate? Yes, sir. And have both you and David had an opportunity to review that decree? Yes, sir. And both have signed on the last page. Is that correct? Yes. And under the terms of that decree, uh, the basics of, are that you will both be joint managing conservators of Mason with you having the primary right to determine his residency. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Uh, and you will have some standard visitation rights. Uh, y'all been working around and doing what works best for y'all already, yes. correct? Uh-huh. Uh, and do you believe that visitation and possession schedule is in Mason's best interest? Yes. With respect to the division of your marital estate, have you also reached that agreement that's set forth in that agreed final decree of divorce? Yes, sir. And does that set forth basically that you are going to get the house in three acres? You're going to assume the note on the house. Uh, uh, David gets his things in his possession. You get your things in your possession. You have sole ownership of the 3P Outfitters LLC and the accounts associated with that. You right. pay him. You pay him a fifteen thousand dollar amount to equalize certain things. You're responsible for your taxes. He's responsible for his taxes, etc. Is that correct? Yes. And is that uh, what you believe to be a fair and just division of your marital estate? Yes, sir. With respect to child support, you're not seeking any child support at this point in time, are you? No, sir. But you are requesting that uh, David reimburse you for the cost of health insurance and dental insurance for Mason. Is that right? Correct. And that's contained in the order that we are submitting today. Correct. Yes. Uh, lastly, are you asking to have your maiden name restored? Yes, I am. And, that, and that's, and are you asking that to avoid creditors? No, sir. Are you, uh, asking for that change to avoid prosecution from the law? No, sir. Uh, do you believe this agreed final decree of divorce to be both in the best interest of your children or your child and a fair and equal division of your estate? Yes, sir. Are you asking the court to approve that? I am. Yes, sir. I'll pass the witness judge. All right. Very good. We will approve your agreement and execute the agreed final decree of divorce as presented. Uh, you are divorced as of today. You may not remarry for 30 days. He will also uh, change your name back to your previous name. Remember that you'll have to get your social security card, your driver's license, voter registration, your employment records, bank accounts, insurance accounts, <laughs> and maybe a few more things. Uh, now you got a lot of homework and Mr. Chapman can probably give you some more ideas as well. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this filed back with the clerk today and you should be able to get a copy of that within about 10 days. Anything else for the record, Mr. Chapman? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, we'll recess from the record. And if you'll circle back around, Mr. Chapman, on that other issue with Miss Moneyhun, we'll see you all later.
Okay. Thank, Thank you, Judge. You. May we be excused? You're excused, and that's it for the Mason docket. So let's switch gears Two, four. on over to one, Kimball. Four. Here, this is ex parte Herrera. And you may proceed with your petition for extension, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Nicholas Herrera was arrested back in July for possession of controlled substance penalty group two. I've conferred with Ms. Schmidt, who ultimately declined to prosecute the case. And I conferred again with her this morning, or actually this afternoon. She indicated that she doesn't have any objections to the petition for expunction, Your Honor. And so we're asking the court to go ahead and grant that petition. All right. So I'll execute the order on the petition as submitted. We'll get that back to Kimball County. Hopefully sometime early next week, that'll get mailed out to you. Anything else then from you, Mr. Hurt? Not on this matter, Your Honor. All right. We will recess from the record and you're free to go. Thank you. Back. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. And you too. All right. As, as Norris, I don't even know, is that Mr. or Miss Norris? Mr. Norris? All right. That's Mr. Judge. All right. Yeah. You, I would have to say you would, you would not make a very attractive woman, but you're a very handsome man, sir. So it works out perfectly. Well, I'm uh, not sure. I'm not sure my wife said either of those things. <laughs> she stayed with me right. for 30 years. Would it be helpful for Mr. Soto, Mr. Norris to visit for a second in a breakout room? No. Okay. Uh, Y'all can just observe then as we move forward here. I'll, I'll put you back both on mute. This Thank cause you. is styled uh, Northern versus Jenkins here. I apologize, actually. Sorry, I apologize. It is styled in the interest of PAJ, a child here in the 452nd Judicial District Court of Edwards County, Texas. All right, so Mr. Turner is here representing Mr. Jenkins, uh, both who are here. We also have Mr. Phil present representing uh, Ms. Northern, who is present as well. And so, Mr. Turner, you have filed a motion for withdrawal of counsel. My understanding is that that issue is before us at this time. And then is the case also set for a final hearing this afternoon as well, Mr. Ophiel? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So I, I think that may be an error on the docket. So the only issue that we have, of course, is the motion to withdraw. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And I just have some kind of housekeeping matters about moving the case forward afterwards. Okay. It doesn't... okay. Okay. So, Mr. Turner, you have your motion. Um, you have your motion to withdraw. Mr. Jenkins, if you'll unmute your device there. Uh, so Mr. Turner has filed a motion to withdraw, I believe, asking that I allow him to withdraw in his representation of you in this matter. Do you have an objection to his motion to withdraw, sir? No, sir. Okay. Uh, anything uh, in addition to just simply the court granting your motion, Mr. Turner? No, Your Honor. All right. Do you have an order prepared? I don't have one before me. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, if you'll Your Honor, the, the only thing I would request is that an email address be included in order for future service and notice uh, for, Mr. To Mr. for Mr. Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, Mr. Jenkins, um, do you mind telling us your email address uh, right now? And then we'll also get that in the order. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. What is that? It'll be G, B as in boy, and then period, U as an umbrella, B as in boy, period, E D U. Okay. Tell me that the mail dot what? Okay. You. I was thrown off there for a second. Okay. okay. So, GB Mr. Jenkins. Turner, if you'll submit an order with that uh, information in it for contact for Mr. Jenkins, um, and if you want to submit that directly to the court coordinator, uh, if you can do that right now, I'll sign it here in a bit. Um, yes, sir. So, if you'll submit that order, I'll make a note that of the email address and additionally that your motion was granted and you're free to go at this time. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Let me take a second and catch up. Your Honor. Are we off the record or are you? No, we're, we remain on the record. Hold on one second. Let me get caught up on my, on my notes and we'll go from there. Okay. So in a minute, we'll talk about kind of how the case is going to progress forward. Do you have a question before we get there, Mr. Jenkins? Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, um, from my understanding, the final hearing was set for today. Uh, the motion to withdraw came after the final hearing was already set. Okay. I think because of the motion... Um, in anticipation of the withdrawal, we're not going to proceed with the final hearing to, to let you have time to prepare. And also, um, I know Mr. O'Feel is wanting to talk about maybe the process moving forward as well. So do you have an announcement as to that, Mr. O'Feel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Just to kind of give a brief history since I've been involved in the case. Uh, one thing that happened at the last hearing is we resolved all issues regarding conservatorship, possession, and access. 
Um, and so we announced an agreement on the record. Um, so really the, the only portion of the case remaining is the child support issue. Okay. Uh, everything needs to go in effect upon entry of a final order. So uh, prior to that hearing, we had a motion to compel, which did include a lot of information regarding the conservatorship and uh, possession issues. But I basically have withdrawn uh, a lot of those and cleaned it up because they're irrelevant. But I did send a, a, a second request for production a number of months ago um, for just income information. Um, and what we've partially discovered is that although Mr. Jenkins was represented to the court that he was un unemployed and on unemployment, he had created an entity in which he was doing work uh, as a contractor and kind of rerouting his money around that way. Um, so we still need that information. I mean, we've got a substantial amount of money going through that route. We got we got transfers from peer to peer, like uh, I can't remember if it's Venmo or PayPal to different people. Um, I haven't received any of the 1099s for that work, any of the tax returns for the entities, uh, and all I get are, are objections. So that's a long way of saying I do want to set this case for a trial, um, uh, but it, it looks like I'm going to need to set it for uh, the motion to compel on that. Uh, I would like to avoid that and just make a determination on the income that was actually made. Um, I, I think it's just a, a waste of the party's time, the court's time, and to be honest, my client's money. Um, so, All right, so uh, you do have a pending motion uh, request for production that you feel is narrowly tailored to get what you need? Yes, Your Honor, and I've sent cure, uh, a cure request to opposing counsel as recently as March 26th uh, to their last one. Uh, but much of it is uh, objections that it's it's too you know too broad, overly broad, efficient expedition. It's it's just more plate objections. Although I have gotten some information, uh, but not the information, especially the 1099s and tax information and bank accounts that were uh, controlled. We found his mother was taking money or tra being transferred money from the um, the entity in which he was contracting for. I, I just have some real concerns about the process that was going on to avoid the income issues. Okay. Did you file a 23 tax return, Mr. Jenkins? Yes, sir. It was placed on hold due to a 1095A form, um, and I didn't have 1095A. So it's a fraud, ca a fraud case pending on that. Okay. Do you have a copy of the return that you did file? Uh, and what do you mean by that? I, I, I go through um, a tax professional, so like... Um, and do you have access to get a copy of the return that you filed? Uh, I can text them and ask them for it. Okay, so that's something you're looking for, Mr. O'Field? Yes, and the, um, well, there's a number of them. I don't mind going through them. Um, well, I don't. we don't need to do that on the record, right. but <clears throat> right. there's... Uh, so I don't know, Mr. Jenkins, if you have received from Mr. Turner this last requests that Mr. O'Feel filed, but uh, I think if we're talking about child support. Generally, I would assume Mr. O'Feel has his request tailored in, in a way that's not going to be overly burdensome so we can determine what your income is. I can set the case for a motion to compel Mr. Jenkins, which would mean that Mr. O'Feel would ask me to order you to produce the documents that he's requesting, and I would hear both sides and make a determination as to what needs to be produced and what doesn't. I could set that for a hearing in person in Rock Springs, but as Mr. O'Phil said, it may be more financially prudent for everyone to uh, get that relevant information exchanged so we could probably have some sort of um, agreement with regards to child support or at least a, a narrow hearing on that particular issue. We do have court, I believe, on the 6th, May 6th in Rock Springs. I'm not sure uh, in the morning, we do. I think we do have some time. Um, Your Honor, I sent Mr. Turner everything that was asked of me multiple times, and I, I can't send more than what I have. Only form that I don't have is this year's tax return, but every other form I had and I sent it in. So, okay. It was, okay, I understand what you're telling me. I think maybe Mr. O'Feel, in a moment, I can put the two of you in a breakout room and you can. To specifically tell him what you need. He can tell you what he's given to Mr. Turner, what he has left, what he's missing. Um, Y'all can go talk about that and come back and tell me if you if we need to have a hearing or not. Um, and then I guess we could set the case for a 
a motion to compel, but also for a final hearing. Do you want to take that half step and visit with him while I'm dealing with this other matter? That'd be great if we can speed it up. Um, the okay. case, wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to put Ms. Northern back in the waiting room and I'll send Mr. Jenkins and Mr. O'Field to a breakout room. Thank you. Okay. So when y'all are finished in the breakout room, you can send me a chat that you're ready. And when I get finished with this last other case, um, regardless of whether you've messaged me or not, I'll come in and check on you guys. So Ms. Northern, I'm going to put you in the, in the, it looks like you, I guess you're there with Mr. O'Field in his office anyway. So I'll put you in the breakout room or I'll put you back in the waiting room. And then Mr. O'Field and Mr. Jenkins will send you to breakout room one here. So if y'all will both go in there and as I said, wait when you're finished, wait and I'll come visit with you at some point. So we'll Thank recess, you. we'll recess on the, this on the Herbert Bowens versus Abraham EAJ case for a moment. Uh, we begins and top line here in the 452nd Judicial District Court of Kimball County, Texas. We're here for a hearing. Um, my understanding is we're here today for defendant's motion to compel mediation. On behalf of the plaintiff, we have Mr. Norris present with us on Zoom, as well as uh, Mr. Soto representing the defendant. Uh, we are here for a Zoom hearing this afternoon. Uh, you have a motion to compel mediation, Mr. Soto. Yes, Your Honor. So you have that before me here. And are you ready to uh, urge your motion at this time? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Norris, are you ready on this motion? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so I, I don't know anything about the case. And I see you got a page and a half motion, Mr. Soto. So whatever you feel is relevant for me to know, go ahead and let me hear from you. And then we'll hear from Mr. Norris. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. So this is a personal injury lawsuit that resulted from a motor vehicle accident that occurred on August 30th of 2022. My client, Topline Equipment, is the 18-wheeler uh, truck driving company. And my client, uh, the company truck, the tractor trailer, rear-ended essentially plaintiff's truck on I-10 near Junction, Texas. And uh, Post and Counsel also did outline some of the some of the details a bit but uh, on his responsive motion, but I'll just mention that um, he claims to have had some neck and back surgery, among some others, and uh, plaintiff has incurred approximately $160,000 in past medical expenses. However, Your Honor, the, the medical records and deposition testimony show that there was no acute or traumatic injuries. In fact, both experts have already testified and agreed that the imaging uh, showed longstanding degenerative issues. Nevertheless, in an effort to settle the claim, uh, defendant has offered substantially more than three times the past medical. So if the previous medical was 160,000, our offer, our, our, our most recent offer was $561,840. As outlined in our motion to compel mediation, this matter is ripe for mediation. Parties have already exchanged written discovery. The parties have already been uh, deposed. We've also deposed both experts of the parties. This matter is also set for trial June 11th, 2024. Our deadline to mediate was April 12th. Of course, I filed this motion uh, substantially before that. Once we, well, once discussions about setting up mediation fell through, the parties had previously briefly discussed mediating with Scott Beige. In fact, opposing counsel had reached out to him uh, to check on, on dates. Uh, but your honor, uh, as, as your court is aware, this court's local rules which we attach to the, our motion, require the parties to mediate unless the court determines that it is inappropriate for the case. However, Your Honor, I believe that mediation would be beneficial to the parties. First of all, it would allow the parties to hear from the other side and their perspective, which I always think is beneficial in any disagreement. Also allows the mediator an opportunity to challenge each party on our claims and defenses. Um, I believe that that we really do need mediation in this case. Um, sometimes as advocates, we believe that we have the strongest defense or the strongest case, and it might be beneficial, or I think it would be beneficial to hear from an unbiased third party to kind of review the evidence and kind of let us know what the jury might see. And so it's a good preview of what trial might be like. And and more importantly, the hurdles that each party will, will need to clear to win. So and maybe we need... I'm sorry. Go I ahead. was just going to say, Your Honor, it might be beneficial to hear from a mediator kind of challenges on us to kind of make sure that that we have the right perspective going into trial. And there's a there was a pretrial scheduling order. Yes, Your Honor. 
that uh, the court ordered mediation to occur on or before April 12th? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Norris, do you want to respond? Uh, yes, Your Honor. This is a case uh, where my client was hit at 80 miles an hour uh, out there in your neck of the woods. Uh, his medical, he says, 160. He's got a uh, economic model which exceeds a half a million. Uh, a hotly disputed case. Uh, I stylized them twice. There's absolutely no way. You did. I'm sorry. You did what twice? I gave them an opportunity to settle for the limits twice. I stylized them twice. Okay. I'm sorry. There's, there's, there is. Would you? I, I bet the court reporter is having a hard time understanding that word. Would you please spell it for her? Yeah. Uh, Stowers. S T O W E S. Stowerized. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, there's judge. There's absolutely no way. Uh, they've been given an opportunity. They've got nine hundred ninety thousand dollars left. There's absolutely no way. Nothing anybody can say, nothing defense attorney can say, nothing uh, a mediator can say that my client is going to accept that. Uh, he was a large wager working for uh, Halliburton. He worked three weeks on and then a week home. He was on his way home to see his wife. He is. Um, his life's devastated. He's had six surgeries on his spine. Mm -hmm. um, we're not. If they offered policy now, the answer is no, and it's not. Okay, so I guess I got. Let's jump to the chase. So you're telling me your client doesn't need to follow the order of the court? No, not not at all. It's just I think it's it's <clears throat> my position is that it's fruitless unless they're. Okay, let me let me just interrupt, Mr. Ross. Y'all are going to mediation, and and I'll tell you why. It's frustrating for me to have entered a, a scheduling order that y'all agreed to. Uh, your name is on this, Mr. Norris, agreed order, agreed to by Stephen E. Norris, a mediation order. Um, we live in a part of Texas where we're affected greatly by the open border policy of the current administration. Uh, my felony uh, pleadings in um, this county, uh, well, Kimball County, that your case is in, in Edwards County, our felony pleadings have increased 1,000% uh, since the border's been open. In Kimball County, the county where this case is uh, said the, it's probably well over 200% increase in felony pleadings. Uh, this is a five-county district with one district judge, one of two districts in the state of Texas, over 500 judicial districts. This is one that has five counties and only one district judge. Uh, I have multiple felonies pending, um, thousands of felonies pending in this district in family law cases, juvenile cases, child welfare cases, some property cases, and a very few uh, cases such as this. I cannot believe that I am sitting here having to uh, explain to an attorney why he has to comply with an order that he signed. You're going to mediation. If you don't, I'm going to sanction you. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to have your trial as set because of your failure to do what I've ordered you to do and you've agreed to do. I, You've been a lawyer long enough to know that you cannot come into court and say um, mediation isn't going to be fruitful because we're not going to uh, negotiating good faith. That's probably something that's potentially sanctionable as well. So y'all go to mediation and once you get it done, then I guess you can contact the court coordinator to see what uh, the chances are of getting on the trial schedule. Now, somewhere before me, I have our trial schedule. <clears throat> uh, currently, over the next six months, we have about 50 cases set for jury trial. Uh, probably about 40 of them are smuggling cases, uh, including multiple cases in Kimball County on felonies. Uh, so I am one judge with five counties and 52 weeks of the year. Um, you're going to mediation and you're going to make a good faith effort to settle the case. You know what the limits are. You're both probably well experienced attorneys. And um, if you can't figure out who to go to mediation with, I'll find somebody for you to go. So um, that's what we need to talk about on the record. Your motion is granted, Mr. Soto. Do you want me to set a new date by which you can get your mediation accomplished? Or is that something the two you're going to be able to agree on? We can agree on that. Date. Uh, I'm thinking we, we need a date. <laughs> Judge, I'd say we'll get with Mr. Bays and we'll get the quickest date we can get and get it get it done. Um, uh, let me say, I'll just make a docket entry that mediation uh, will be accomplished by June 1st, 2024. Is that going to be an issue? Um, 
No, I don't think that's an issue at all, Judge. Um, I just I just wouldn't want to see that it gets pushed closer to that date because of the dates you're setting. We just soon get it done. I understand the difficulty in getting a trial uh, and in uh, realize the position you're in with everything you've got going on. But I need to try to move this case forward because this man's going under. So okay, uh, we well, all get that uh, mediation done by June first. That's what I'm going to put in the docket entry. I don't know that we need a standalone order that to that effect. Uh, once you get your mediation set, you may want to contact Ms. Money Hun and let her know when that is so we can get the trial date adjusted as well. All right. Thank you for your time. We'll recess and you're free to go. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ron. Your Honor, I did have, or, I, this doesn't have to be on the record, but I did have a question. Yes. Is our trial setting for uh, the current trial setting, uh, is it vacated? No, it is not at this okay. point. Um, I can tell you that um, I do have a felony case set for that week in Kimball County on someone who has been incarcerated probably well over 100 days. So you would probably understand that that would be our priority at this point. But I, it is not vacated because I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we'll, we'll pull the jury. I think you all need to be moving in that direction. And... We, you'll contact Miss Money Hunt and she can give you information on that. Thank you, gentlemen. You're All right. right. Free to go. You're back. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, so, uh, what do you need for me to do? Do you all want to get a trial setting or a, a temporary order setting? What do you want to do? Yeah, I don't think we need temporary. We have temporary orders in place right now. Um, I, I, I would like temporary orders to be modified if the trial if the trial is going to be further out. I would like there to be a modification of the temporary orders. Okay, I understand that. Let me let Mr. O'Field tell me what he's thinking, and then I'll let you as well, Mr. Jenkins. Mr. O'Field? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. so we already have an agreement that was read to the record on final possession and access. I, I, I don't know if he's trying to change the child support or what, but um, I, I did speak with Mr. Jenkins. Um, well, the, the reasons don't matter, but he said he would get me all the information and cure the discovery within two weeks. Um, so if, if we could get a trial date maybe um, two and a half months out, then maybe at three weeks I can get the motion to compel. I just don't want to back up, the, get backed up on not getting the discovery, and then I, I can't proceed forward with trial. Okay. So I think... I remember now you said, Mr. O'Field, we read into the record the agreement for everything besides child support. That's correct. It, and I've shared that proposed final order. We've already drafted it. I've just left blanks for the amount of child support to enter in there. Okay. I can't remember what date that was on. Um, I know we made docket sheets on it. And I have the tra transcript, too. Yeah. It was something in the order that I didn't agree to. I don't know if that got changed or what, but I only got one order. And it had child support blank, but it was something in the order that I didn't agree to. I think it was something about possession until 2025 or something, but I didn't agree to that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll present it, um, Judge, uh, and I, with, along with the transcript. Um, that was all on record. Okay. So when do you want me to set um, the final hearing you said about eight weeks out or something? Yeah, I was, I was thinking like two and a half months out if I could, you know, Maybe get on some docket about three weeks out to make sure Mr. Jenkins produces produces the information I need. Okay. okay, Mr. Jenkins, what did you want to say? Yes, sir. So I came in here today under the impression that today was the final hearing. So for it to be pushed out further, that's fine, but I would like some modification to the temporary orders. Well, what is it you're wanting to modify? Visitation and access? Yes, sir. Okay, well, isn't, I think what Mr. Afil is saying is correct, and that was what was agreed was read into the record, and that's what we're operating under. Am I incorrect about that? No, no the no, the the final orders, the order orders that were read on record go into effect upon uh, us finalizing everything else. What's different between what that is and what we're doing now, then? I have three hours every Thursday. And so the in, the visitation would increase at the final order, Mr. O'Field? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, let me pull up the order so I can just kind of 
Yeah. Well, is there a reason not to go ahead and implement the access now <clears throat> that's been agreed to and read into the record? I think our thinking was at the hearing that if we did it effective immediately, we wouldn't have a written order and we'd have this disagreement about, we'd you know, we're in that gray area between it being papered and, and read out. Okay. So I guess what I would suggest then is, Mr. Jenkins, you have a copy of what Mr. O'Field thought was the, you know, agreement and everything in there is set forth except for the child support amount. If you have an issue with something in that order, you need to communicate that back to Mr. O'Field. If y'all can get that portion hammered out, I think we could uh, agree to proceed with that visitation order pending our trial. Um, I think we'll just set it for trial on uh, at 10 a.m. on June 24th, and we can have about two hours worth of a hearing, Mr. O'Feel. Um, if you'll give me some leeway, uh, the only, my only concern is that it's going to be going through probably bank accounts and things like that, unless we have the, the tax returns. It, it's not just a W-2 case. That's the problem. I'd say I could probably do my portion in three if, if it goes long. I don't know how long Mr. Jenkins would need. In three hours? Right. Well, then we're going to have to get a special setting with the spe with a visiting judge for that. I, I can't. Um, with the summer schedule and our felony schedule, I don't have that much time to set. Um, we're just completely jammed up. Um, do you want to tell me a date and a time and I can try to get a, a visiting judge for a trial then? Um, yes. I, I mean, I open up around June. That's kind of when my calendar starts opening up besides I'm trying to look to see if there's any vacation letters on file. Okay. We just, um, especially in Edwards County, because we have that humongous felony docket and we already have doubled our presence there. Um, we're just, with five counties, it's hard to juggle things around. I mean, I can try too. If I don't complete, um, do we just reset or would you rather do a special setting? Well, I'm happy to give it a shot. Uh, okay. but, but if we have to recess, it would probably be difficult to find a time promptly after that. Um, It seems to me like um, once you get the information you need, you're going to be within the guidelines. It's pretty simple. If we have the information, you just stick the information in the formula and the number pops out, and that's what the child support is supposed to be. Is there something that you anticipate? I mean, I understand you may not anticipate an agreement, but is there something that may be unusual uh, or questionable with regards to what the evidence is going to be? Uh, yes, because there, there's a business account with a whole lot of personal expenses coming out and then payments to relatives, um, other people. They, they could be employees or not, but you know I, I'm not real sure. But basically, the account's depleted each month through what I would argue is not business-related expenses. And then that's where all the peer-to-peer -peer transfers because the money goes out through like <clears throat> Venmo or whatever the – whatever the peer-to-peer -peer app is. Well, I have currently eight cases set for jury trial on June 25th in three different counties. Okay. Uh, so it might be best to just try to get a time to set this with a visiting judge sometime when you're available. Um, okay. Tell me, tell me what your availability is at the 1st of June, and we'll just do it then. Tell me a couple of days, and we'll get us a visiting judge. Okay, I start clearing up around the middle of June, around the 12th. I'm out the 13th and 14th for Rusty Duncan. I'm set for tri trial, I think, with you or hearing or something on June 17th. Um, I don't think that's me. I don't have anything set on June 17th in Edwards County. Okay. But we this could. Would you like – we can just – what was that? What do you have that you think set then? That's the hearing we're meeting on tomorrow. Uh, the pre-trial conference tomorrow with Ms. Perry. 
Oh, okay. I might have given you that as a potential day. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I could do that one that day, depending on what happens. Okay. Why don't we just set, set it for 9 a.m. on June 17th. That's a Monday for trial. Trial, 9 a.m., 6, 17, 24. Okay. Okay. And do you want to set a pretrial on May 20th then? Would that one be by Zoom? No, that would be in person. Okay. In the uh, morning at 10. In Edwards County? Yes. You want to do that? Uh, yep, yeah, that, that can work. I'll make sure. Okay, so... That's a pre-trial on May 20th, 10 a.m. and trial on June 17th, 9 a.m. 6, 17, 24. Okay. Okay. Jenkins, you got to get whatever information that you need to get. You need to get that transferred so we can get things cranked out. Okay. We got to get a final order entered. And whatever issue you had with the proposed order that Mr. O'Phil sent you with regards to custody and possession, if there's one part in there you didn't feel like you agreed to, highlight that and send it back to Mr. O'Phil so y'all can get that hammered out. If you get that part hammered out, I'm happy with y'all um, moving forward with implementing that portion prior to a trial. Okay, anything else, Mr. O'Phil? No, and Mr. J Jenkins, I can send you that proposed order and the transcript over to you. Um, yes, sir, please. To prepare them. Okay, just so I have it right, 5 20, 24 at 10 o'clock a.m. is the pre trial. June 17, 2024, 9 o'clock is the trial. Correct, both in Rock Springs, and probably the trial will be with the visiting judge. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. We'll see you in Rock Springs on May 20th. Right, okay, thank you. Thank you.